Because I know you've answered us. As we listen to your word, we pray you speak to us. Let your word change our life. Give us a testimony. Renew our spirit. Renew our soul. Renew our thoughts. Renew our feeling. Make your word real in our heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can you shout a better amen? I'm preaching on the topic this morning, God's love for all. God's love is for all. Today being the 14th of February, 2016, a lot of people all across the whole world are celebrating Lover's Day and Valentine, whatever. But I think many people celebrate it in the wrong way because the field is a time for them to um, to visit and spend the weekend with their loved ones, which they thought. The field is a time for them to travel and stay with friends and stay with neighbors. They feel it's time for them to stay together, husband and wife to stay together, not to go outside. Some people feel that well, it's the time for them to relax and go for picnic, go for relax and go maybe to where they eat trees and do visitation here and then. And they don't feel it was the right time for them to be in church because Valentine falls on Sunday. The feel is a time for them to express their feelings to their friends and loved ones. And for your information, Valentine time or Valentine Day, that is when you see a lot of promiscuous acts immoral act in the name of Valentine. But the actual meaning of love is not love to demonstrate or to multiply sin. It is the love that God has shared for us. If you have forgotten God's love, and replace it with the love of the world, then that is a bad thing. God's love is the uttermost. uttermost. If you forget anything, don't forget the fact that the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed on him will not perish, but what? Have a everlasting life. Now, love is all about giving. In John chapter 15, verse 10, 12, John 15, 12 to 16, I think I read a very long verses, but let's we'll see it if that is all. We've got a lot from there. Love, John 15, verse 12 to 16. This is my commandment. That you love what? One another. As I have loved you. Verse 13 says, Greater love had no man than this. That what? A man laid down his life for his friends. Verse 14 says, 
Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15 says, Henceforth I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I've called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I've made known unto you. Then the last verse 16 says this, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whosoever whosoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now from these verses of scripture you've just seen, it's all about love. The greatest commandment is, is love. The greatest commandment is you love God first. Then the second one is you have to love your neighbor. You don't love the person because he is a Nigerian or he's an America, he's a white or he's a black. No. You don't love the person because he's from the same village with you or not from the same tribe with you, not from the same state. You don't love the person because the person is born again Christian or the other one is not yet born again. You love the person whether he or she is born again or she's, he or she is not born again. You love the Muslims. You love the Hindus. You love the atheists. You love every human being. Not necessarily must be a member of your church. You love the Catholics. You love the Anglicans, the Baptists, the Pentecostal, the, the, the idol worshiper. You love them. And that is one thing I want us to clarify. It's not because he has done so good to you so you have to love him because he, he do give you money. Or he gives you that. He gives you a lift. And so let me love the person. No. Love is not because of what the person is giving you, lift is giving you. It is not the love you, that is, you have to compensate someone. Some people will say, well, this man has been training me, so what do I have to him, give to him? Since this man has been training me in my school, giving me money, I have no other thing to pay him back. So I pay him with my body. And the lady will go and ask the man, say, when do I come to the house? Or how, where we will spend the weekend? Or can't we go out together? In other words, indirectly, the lady is trying to make the man to understand, even though he did not say it openly, that I can offer you my body for all the good things you have been doing for me. The money, the care, so I have to compensate you by offering you my body. And that is not the love. Love is not because you have to offer your body to someone to prove that or to thank the person because he did something. You are already prostituting yourself for the money that was given to you. And that is it. So that is not love. It's not the fact that, okay, because I needed to buy some cosmetics and have to visit such and such person because if I offer my body to the person at the end of the day it will give me 20,000 or give me 10,000 and show my love and let me offer love. That is not the love. You may say that but that is not love. That is love is pure, clean, holy and lust has tendency for immoral practices. Now we are coming back to issue of love. The Bible says in verse 12 of that place, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. God say, I love you and therefore love one another. Verse 13 says, greater love had no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Friends, listen to me. There's nothing as big that a man should die for us. 
You cannot die for your friends. You cannot die for your neighbor. But Jesus died for you and I. Now, can you imagine your friends is with you, your neighbor is with you, or somehow you are traveling, and it's some, maybe I'm robber came and said they must kill somebody. And kill somebody. Who will, who will gladly come out? And say, okay, if you want to kill somebody, leave all this one in the vehicle. Kill me. Or who will come and say, they said we must kill some blood. You know, they come to the compound. Say, if you want to kill somebody, leave this, all this one. Take me and kill me. No, it can't happen. You will not do it. Even I, your pastor won't do it. Because I'm not Jesus. I am an Estorogba. Yeah, the difference between Jesus and Nestorogba. Hallelujah. He has his own mission. I have my own mission. I will protect my life. If I can run, I will run. Hallelujah. But the issue here is this. Jesus Christ demonstrated what we call sacrificial love. It is the highest class of love ever. It is the highest, highest class of love. That is ready to die for you and for me and he died for us he died to save us one the blood of goats and sheep cannot walk, wash away sin permanently we need the blood of a perfect being and it was jesus blood that was needed now imagine if jesus did not die i mean for us do you can you imagine how many of us would have been killing goats since last year to now now just imagine, or oh, cheap. We would have been killing sheep all the time. Every time. We would have been killing so many. Many sheep who have laid down their life for us. And you can't do it once. You do it often and continuously. And that is it. That is it. And when we talk about giving to God of our money, we find it difficult to give. But when it is the Old Testament, you have to give goat and sheep and cow, whatever. You have to do it because you just want to be free from the guilt of sinners. Now, the issue here on ground is this. When God gave us his life, he took our own life and, from us. He has changed with our, us. Now, when God looks at us, he sees Jesus in us. Now, he sees Jesus. So, Jesus is now in us. But in God's imaginative mind, he sees Christ in what? In us. That is in God's mind. He pictures, imagine, visualize that Jesus is in us. And we ourselves, Jesus, we know Jesus by the standard of God's word. We believe that Jesus is in us. The hope of glory. Because he died. Now, knowing the fact that he died for us. And he said, we are no longer servants. We are not friends. Who are we to be qualified to be, I mean, friends to Christ? Many of all, you choose your friends. You look at this person's face. This person is clean and good enough. Hmm. This person is my friend because she is clean or he is clean. You look at the other one and say, this person is dirty and smelly and stinking. Can't be my friend. They look at the other person and say, well, this one is uh, well-educated, sharp, intelligent, social, and adopting. Adop you know, it's quickly ad adoptable to people. This is my friend. And look at the other one and say, oh, well, he's cute, man. This one is cute. Look at the height. Look at the shape. Look at the color. Look at the haircut as a young man. Look at his mustache like this. Look at his tie. I like the way he nods his tie. And you may choose him to be your friend because of the way he looks. Then the other one, he doesn't look the way you like. He doesn't make up well. He doesn't do this one where his, his teeth is not clean enough. And you feel his mouth is smelling. You say, that one, this is not my stuff. I am more than this. How can I flock with this kind of bush boy, bush man, bush girl, and all sorts of things? Now, that is not for Jesus. Jesus never looked at anybody to be dirty. He never looked at anybody to be unclean. He never looked at anybody to be a butch boy, butch girl. He never looked at anybody to be old and young, no teeth, gray hair, whatever. 
You never look at anybody to be ugly and stinking and smelly. No matter where you are, no matter the position you are, he loves you so much. You may not have money, he loves you. Many of us, we want to fall in love with those who have money. Oh, this person has money, he has more money. At least he can make way for me. And because he has money, he could be my friend. At least he can give me money for wanting or the other to sort my, some of my basic needs. If that is the reason why you make friends, if that is the reason why you show your love to that person, you've got it wrong. Jesus Christ loved everyone, no matter our position and condition and status, whatever. And we as individuals, we need to love one another as ourselves. Can you shout the big amen? amen? We need to love one another and show love in the real aspect. Love. Now, what is love? Love is caring. Love care for one another. I mean, you care for one some, someone. In most cases, the best way to demonstrate love is to love someone who is who people don't like to care for. People don't like to care for. People don't like to associate with the person. So, you know, just love the person and show him love. And you see someone who who does not want giving a hug and you gave him or her a hug. That is love. Not the one you say, this one, who is this? Oh yeah? And you be, you be running away. Then you see this other one, perfume, clean, wet dress, you open your hand like this and say, sister, you are welcome. Then when you see the other one, you say, hey, how is everything? No. You should be able to show love to the ugly, to the bad, to the old, and to the young. And that is it. We should care. Care for one another. Then love is also giving. Love is also what? Giving. Many of you wake up today. Did you tell your husband? Do you tell your wife? I love you. Happy Valentine. Did you do that? If you do that, raise up your hand. You're married. You're married. You told your husband or you told your wife, I love you. Happy Valentine. Just raise up your hand. And some of you sisters never told your husband, I love you. Listen to me. I, I, I ask people in my place in, that, that, I live, that live with me in my house. I stayed awake till after 12. And after 12, I, I call my wife. I have to stay awake till after 12. After 12, I call my wife. I said, I just, I just stayed awake for you. Just to make sure 12 o'clock reach to tell you, I love you and you are my vow. Hallelujah. And not just that, when I wake up again, I did what? I, I, I mean, when I came to the office, what I did this morning, six before white service, about starting, I sent out white. She, she's sleeping, but I have to send out that one again because that is, they are 12 o'clock over there, 12 midnight. Now they are sleeping there. So I've, when she wakes up, but she will wake up when we are closing for second service. So she will see the text and see it again from the dear husband, loving husband. Happy Val love. You know, wire to my daughter and wire to just send text to them and tell them and over there. And when they, they see it over there, I woke up to tell them, call my daughter and call my son was in place of work and call my daughter, Jew. I say, oh, Jew, you are my heart and I love you. And all that. And it's just like that. Now, the point is this. Let's listen. And right 12 o'clock, I know I sent text to one person or so and, and, and um, that I felt has mean much to me. Construct the text. And I say, oh, hello. Just send a text to that person before it's in the night. And I'm sure this morning the person saw it. But the issue is this. But the, 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 the issue is this. You see, you have to show love to people. And that is it. Show love. Hallelujah. 
show love to people someone who is dear to you let the person know you love the person and you care love is giving give something today i mean this morning i, I still see a lot of love this person say pastor they couldn't tell me what but they give me a gift say when the middle somebody gave me one gift i just remember oh it's my wife is around here sure i will receive my gift today but thank God, even though she's not around, somebody has handed by a gift for me. And I got the gift. I took it inside my office. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is a gift. Because someone cares. Like, look at someone and say, who cares for you? If nobody cares for you, then start caring for someone. Then people will start caring for you. Can you shout a big amen? Yeah. So love is giving. Love is obeying. Love is trusting. And love is believing. Love is denying all to follow the person you love. And if you love Jesus, you have to deny all to follow Jesus. And that is a good thing. You have to deny all to follow who? Jesus. Love is obeying. Love is trusting. Love is believing. Love is giving. Love is caring. Love is denying. And following love is obeyed now listen to me it is out of love that missionary travel all the way from America from London to come to Nigeria to preach the gospel to us how many of you know that now many of the missionaries that came some landed in Calabar some landed in Lagos you know some of this history already some of these missionary they died of mosquito some of them died in the course of coming by sea to Africa to preach the gospel. And the, 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 as they died on the way, did they stop others from not coming with the gospel? No, they never stopped others. More are dying, more are coming to preach the gospel. They are coming to institute churches. And that is how... Catholic Church came to Nigeria. Anglican came to Nigeria. Baptists came to Nigeria. Some of these churches. And these people were carrying the passion of Christ. It is the love of Christ. They carry the passion of Christ. They were coming with the gospel to preach to, preach to us. In the, you see, they ha, we had no houses. They don't care whether there was houses or not. Tents where they were sleeping in tents. They have to come with medications. They have to come with clothes because there was no clothes. It is out of love. They keep coming. Not that they are coming to receive silver and gold. They were not coming because of money. They were coming because of love. It was love that brought the whites, the missionary, here to do what they did here and they died in this land doing what they believe they love most. If you love Jesus, and truly you love Jesus. The best way to demonstrate your love for Jesus is to go and tell someone right on the street or the corner and say, Jesus loves you. That is it. The best way to go out and tell somebody, Jesus loves you. And let the person f see the love of Christ in you. And tell them, God wants to visit you and God wants to save you. God wants to help you. Our children, our teens are in the ch teen church right now. They are doing the service. But the issue is that they should also know the teen church, the children's church, wherever they are, they should also know that the love of Christ is not only for the adult. The children should know how to preach to others. The teen church should also know how to preach to others. Now, it, you do not wear and you do not do right if you don't go out to show your love. Maybe sometimes this daily mighty warrior you see today, daily mighty warrior is just, is just about a hundred naira. And you don't know what it means if you give the word of God to someone. You don't know what it means. Now the Jehovah witness will rise up on the last day to judge us. And they will tell us if they know what we know, they will carry this gospel to every, every center. Because every day, the Jehovah Witness people, they go from street to street. What they do? Just sharing what they have. Awake. Awake. They carry it from street to street, from house to house. No matter how wealthy you are as a Jehovah Witness, 
you must carry this thing out. True or false? No matter how old you are, it is a mandatory fact. A friend of mine was telling me that he brought his mother who cannot speak English, can't speak English to Canada, in America, not America. And the mother said it would be a taboo for him not to carry this gospel to go and preach. He said, he meet his mother, his son, who is not even, is not a Jehovah Witness. He told the mother, he told the son, say, give me money to pay to give as tight as in my Jehovah Witness. He said, Mama, I'm not a Jehovah Witness. Moreover, you are not working. How come you want to pay tight in, in Jehovah Witness when you are not working? It's just if you are working and you will pay tight. He said, My picking it's not like that too. It's mandatory. I am not in in Nigeria, but anywhere I go, I must pay tight. So give me money to pay tight. The, the boy troubled, the mother troubled the son until the mother, the son started giving money for tight to the mother. To the, to the mother. Then he said he want to go and get where they will be, where the Jehovah Witness is to hold meeting. So they went and be, after a lot of trouble, he has carried the mother to look for Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall building. And he entered the place, and he, he will carry the mother every to go there and carry some awake this material and buy some awake. You know, they will get some subscription and carry some of them. They are paying for them, carry. And he said every once in a week, say the mother will go to a junction. Can't speak English, and they will be handling awake to people who are passing by, going to Boston. Told so the mother said that it is part of his blood, her blood, to always go out, even when it was, she was in Nigeria, to give out a wake. They will rise up to judge us. If a mother who can speak English in America, who went to take care of his own son, I mean, something happened, you have to go on a visit, could do that in a strange land, they will rise up to judge us. That was love. Greater love had no man. That was love. So, what am I bringing this in? See, if we don't do that, now listen to me. Many, many of you don't know what is happening in the world. The, the Muslim religion is spreading more than Christianity. Many of you don't know. How many of you know that? The Muslim religion is spreading more than Christianity. Spreading so fast, they use every resources their money in million they give they are every resources everything they have they promote even them in any form even for their for them to marry how many wives and have plenty of children and make them to be christians and muslims and they are sponsoring in overseas muslims now are going street to street doing evangelism in overseas, Muslims are going street to street, preaching, preaching, preaching on evangelism. One, they will be going street, Muslim, overseas. If you don't believe, check the YouTube and check what, see what's happening there. And you see them, see them on street doing evangelism on the street. Street by street, by street doing evangelism. See, they are doing it in such a way that you, you won't believe that they are, they are Muslims. Doing serious evangelism. They use money, they use everything they have to, to and you are saying, eh, they are still having money, they are, God is prospering. Why would God not prosper the way they are doing what they believe? But the issue is that how, we, you say you know the truth. You said you know the truth. We say we are Christian. We are comfortable in Zion. We are comfortable in church. We are comfortable in hearing God's word, and that is what. And we need to go out and do the gospel. The best love you can show to the people is to go out and evangelize. And that is it. That is the best thing. And if we don't go, we are not doing ourselves good. Because that is the heartbeat. That is heartbeat. That is the heartbeat of God. My wife sent me a text this morning. And I said, happy Val, my heart beat. I, I was melting 
wonderful oh yes but the truth is this the truth is this evangelism is god's heartbeat winning soul for jesus if you truly want to receive favor from heaven the key is what evangelism if you really want to receive prosperity from heaven the key is what evangelism so winning winning somebody in the streets among your friends among your neighbor to jesus and following him or her up until she person follows you to church the love you have for god do you know people go to church they don't know it. they don't even bother they love the place of work more than church there are people who go to church go to office they will not go late go to school they will not go late but if they come to church they will go to church late are you hearing what i'm saying they will not care when they they don't bother the time they enter church say church is any time i like now that is not love that is not love anytime in my life i go to church if i come late nobody will kill me you fear man more than god you have time to go to school you have time to go to work to report to your work then when it comes to god's own anytime i like i go to church and i'll go to church late doesn't really matter for a service of two and a half hours you will go to church late a service of two and a half hours not even not even up to two and a half hours you go to church late oh well anytime i like i go to church if i like can come to bible study if, I, if you don't come to bible study it's a sign you don't love god if you don't come to Thursday service it's a sign you don't love god you must show your love if you love me you must prove it i must see the sign that you love me are you hear what i'm saying i must see the sign you love me you must do something that will make me happy you must do something that i will i be and when i see you i will smile but if you don't love me and you do something that is bad i will not smile do you know there are people who live close to church they go to church late people who live close to church they go to church late have you noticed it before those who live to go to who live close to church they always go to church late those who live close to church, they don't even bother about Bible study and they don't even bother about the Thursday service. Those who live in Kakuri, they come to church before them. Why? Because of no love. Greater love had no man than this. And a friend should lay down his life for his friend. Friends, listen to me. If you truly want love, show love to Jesus. If you truly want to enjoy Jesus' love, demonstrate your love. In what you give, how you give. Some people want people to force them to give. I told somebody, I said, look, time has come. We shouldn't talk about giving much. If you want to give, give. If you don't want to give, go with your money. It's not the basics. We must not casual you. This is not for one night church. If you want to give, give. If you don't want to give, go with your money. Nobody will tell you to do anything. There are places you go today. Across in Lagos, in Abuja, in Wari, and some other places you go here and there, where before you even receive prayer, there are certain amount of money you have to pay. You have to register first. 5,000 registration, 10,000 registration, just to enter to, for prayer. Then after registration, you have to give some money. A friend of mine told me, told me they have to say they want to come to your house to pray. It's 50,000 naira. If you want to go to your shop place, 100,000 naira. Front man was told me say he is he was sick. They have to they have to, they were somebody they brought to me for prayer once and they said they have to tell by game how much is the money before going to prayer. Before going to prayer. Friends, listen to me. I am saying this on a serious note. If you truly love Jesus, show your love. Nobody should force you to give. Nobody should tell you before you do the right thing. Nobody should tell you, you must give, you must not give. Your conscience should tell you whether you should give or you should not give. If you like, give, your, give 10 era. If you like, give 100 era. It's all for you. It's not for me. If you like, look for change and give God change. I'll be looking for pieces, peanut. Say, God, you deserve my change. You don't deserve my real money. 
is the change. So I have to look for change. Peace me change and look for change. Buy sweet and get change and give to God change. It's an insult. It shows how you love God. You can't come to me and look for change and give me something. Can you come to me and say, I want to give me something and look for change and come and give it to me? No, you can't do it. How much more God, who is hundred times, million times greater than me? Sometimes when, I, when we go to the offering and we see five, five naira and what is it? Ten naira, five, five naira. It becomes an eye. So I say, this is, children church are there. Even teen church is even there. We have hundreds of hundreds of teen church people holding service right there over the net. Hundreds, literally hundreds of them. Am I right? You went there, I said, I told you to go and see the, our church they're doing. Just across in Advocate in the hall over there. The children's church over there. Yeah, that's different. If we talk about that, we well, no problem. Because some of them are not working. We have uh, some of us who are, and we treat God with that love. We don't show concern. We don't feel it's painful. We don't feel. Listen to me. If you don't witness for, to Jesus, it's a sign, an indication, you are not even saved. Because you don't have anything, witness, nothing to tell. If you have something to tell, you, I mean, you will say it. If witnessing to Jesus, about Jesus is to tell someone about what Jesus did for me, I am saved. I am born again. I enjoy the love of Christ. That is all. Come and join me and enjoy God's love. Simple. Come and join me. Enjoy. If you have never experienced that love of God and joy of God and the goodness of God, you have nothing to say. But if you have enjoyed that sweetness of God, you can bully me to someone and say, look, my brother, I'm enjoying God's love. I'm enjoying the blessing. God has been so good to me. I have the peace of God, the rest of God. I am settled. And God is so good. God, come and join. Come and, come and embrace this thing I've ex experienced and see what Jesus will do for you. And you invite the person. To Jesus. You bring the person to church and let the person stay. Listen to me, I'm glad to understand. The love of God is the uppermost. You must love God. And that love must take you to somewhere to do one thing for God. And that is, that's why I say it, and I repeat, that is why if you can't come to church on time, it shows no love. If you can't take it as a point to come to Bible study, evening services, you Sunday, Sunday, paracrine doc, drugs, Sunday, Sunday, medicine, or then you miss it. If you can't be in church because pastor is not in church, you don't even love God. You love me, but you don't love Jesus. And it's not me you are serving. It's Jesus you love. I repeat, if you cannot love Jesus enough to come to church because pastor is not in church, then you don't love Jesus. You are loving me. You are an idol worshiper. You are a worshiping man. Because we all are worshiping who? Jesus. I worship Jesus. You need to worship Jesus. And Jesus is the uttermost for everything. Our Lord for Jesus is the uttermost. Do you love Jesus? You will sell everything you have to follow Jesus. You will do everything. You are ready to, you are ready to go across the miles. Just like people came to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel to someone, to affect someone. That is the thing. That is the show of love. Stand up and let us pray. I want you right now, open your mouth and tell God how much you feel for Jesus. I'm not here to make you excited. I'm here, not here to make you scream. I'm here to make you know the truth about love. Love is a key. And if you can't have love, you don't have Christ. Open your mind and say, God, yeah, I confess my lack of love. I remove hatred from my heart. Unforgiven spirit from my heart. Bitterness from my life. I put in love, giving, help, care, and everything. Love of Christ, I take it to my life. Open your mind and begin to pray. Right? Pray, pray the, the love of Christ into your heart. I speak for the weak. I'm an advocate for the young. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a child of covenant. It's my time to laugh. Cause I have conquered it all. Impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing I am 
champion. I am a mighty warrior.